My wife and son and I were out on a family bicycling trip yesterday, a long trip. I uh, went through one of uh, my city's main parks and there's the usual mob of people there staring into their cell phones on converging on something or whatever. You know, the Pokemon thing, I have no idea how it all works, but that was, you know, my first uh, view of it face to face. I'm always slightly behind the times. <laughs> um, what do I make of it? Well, I don't know. It's it, it, it looks new, but I would say it's just the latest version of, I don't know, the sort of thing that followers in our society always do. You know, people that need to have stuff fed to them, um, people that sit in front of their TV for inspiration, or they go on the net to see what's coming down the pike, or uh, which we all do to a certain extent. Um, or, you know, people that think that whatever is on the radio is what's cool, or whatever every other people say is interesting is interesting, or, you know, a daytime TV sets all the trends that they follow. <clears throat> Uh, you notice this thing even in things like body language. Uh, we went to um, went to a mall the day before, and I noticed that the shop uh, assistants were shopping with my wife, and she's buying her new uh, wardrobe, I guess. And the shop girls, they're all women in these women's apparel shops, all have this sort of choreographed shop assistant um, body language, you know, like. Uh, South and his waiter. Um, and you know where they picked it up? They picked it up by seeing other um, shop assistants talking a certain way. Or they picked it up by watching how shop assistants appear on television. That kind of thing. They're taking their cue in every way from other people because they think that there's some other thing out there that actually is bigger than them that they want to be a part of. Um... You know, it's all a big, as a lot of people have said, hamster wheel. But there seems to be those among us who need a hamster wheel to run on. You know, um, there's something that, it means something to them. It's not that they're such degraded human beings that all they require is a Pokemon thing to, to play and their life has meaning. It's just their requirements are very simple. That's one way to look at it. That's I'm not saying that this is the only way to look at the Pokemon phenomenon. Um, or there's another way I would look at it and say, okay, what do you want these people to do? Do you want them to fiddle around with some uh, cell phone fad? Or do you want them all, I don't know, dressing up in brown shirts and goose-stepping down our main street? Because that's another thing that followers do, right? They look for somebody to rouse up their indignation instead of their playfulness or whatever. Rouse up their rage. Um... There might be something Sisyphean about following something forever, and that's all you ever do is follow and try to keep up to society, or keep up to the fads or the memes or the latest things to do. But I think that there's a section of our society, and you know, you, I, I'm not saying that the, that the there's clear boundaries of this section, but they seem to be okay with that. Um, a lot of people sort of don't like sheeple or the herd or the mob or whatever you want to call it. I sort of think of, you know, in, in as much as there is a herd, it simply exists. It's not, it's nature is neither good nor bad. Um, it's just waiting to be given something to follow. It's waiting to have a carrot dangled before it. One could argue that all of civilization is simply an attempt to find something for that herd of followers to do, um, which they require, in the same way as I require, to a certain extent, to be left alone, and to be ignored, and to be, I don't know, not dragged into this. In fact, I almost sort of see it as a part of my character that I need to sort of feel that I'm not allowing myself to be dragged into things that, you know, people are trying to drag me into. I guess I'm just a born kind of non-conformist, but a non-conformist needs something to not conform to, if you follow me. Whereas the followers, I guess, need something that they must conform to. Um, there has to be a grain for me to go against, but there has to be a grain for them to not go against, or to go with, type thing. Um, oversimplification. Um, because, again, it's I don't think that their minds work like that. They're not just saying, give me some pointless thing to do so I can avoid examining myself. Uh, it, perhaps it does have positive meaning to them. Um, 
perhaps that Sisyphean boulder actually is of actual positive value to them. Um, it's not just a means of distracting them, perhaps it actually gives them something. You sort of think, how disgusting is that? Well, or how lucky are they? <laughs> That all they need is a stupid cell phone game, and their lives are complete. Uh, some people that I know who I discuss this sort of thing with are inclined to hate the herd for that reason. Um, oh, what did I say that that was? Ochlophobia, because the ochlos is the herd, or the crowd, or... Yeah, it's actually the mob. Uh, it's the herd, but in a very pejorative way in ancient Greek. Uh, Ochlophobia, where you just think that the herd is just disgusting sheeple. They just deserve whatever they get. Whatever they do is frightening when you see them in en masse doing what they do. Um, but, I don't know. I think that the herd, or the followers, uh, or whatever you want to call that tendency in human society, it just is. It's neither good or bad. Um... You know, it, it, it brings me to the, the what I always discuss is the Hindu idea of Maya. Maya is the illusion that everything that we see around us is somehow real. Um, that, you know, all the f forms and phenomena and everything are, they have a, a, an actual reality that transcends human experience about them. That it's not just something that we've all sort of created, and it's just a big collective illusion, or even, as Orwell would call it, a collective solipsism. Um, and Maya d isn't necessarily bad. It's often seen as a seductively smiling female. You know, um, there's something f fundamentally female about Maya, about the illusion, about the forms dancing in front of the cave dwellers on the wall of the cave. Uh, it's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily good. It simply is. And um, and in this respect, um, Maya might even be necessary for some people. Um, is that a condemnation of them? I don't think so. Uh, we all need something out of this existence to give our existence meaning. If they can get meaning out of just staring into their cell phones and walking aimlessly... What's the harm in it? Would you rather they found meaning in something a lot more <laughs> uh, real, a lot more dangerous? <laughs> um, long live the herd, I guess. <laughs>